Hey Jazzy, hey everyone. Today is Monday night and tomorrow is my birthday. And I am going to be donating my hair, which I do already made two times, I think. So it's not a new thing, but I am also going to be attempting something that I have never done before, which is shaping my entire head. So here we go. Hey Jazzy, um, I don't know what today is, I think it's Friday, I've lost track of time but I know it is the 19th of July so in 30 minutes it will be the 20th of July and that is exactly one month away from my 19th birthday uh, As I've told you, I promised myself I will shave my head this year um, but I will save that for the official post, this is just the introduction and to come with the introduction is an unboxing video and my reaction to it. I've only opened the top, uh, which was nothing exciting. Um, but now I'm gonna open this thing and see what's in it. I mean, I know what's in it. I, I read the description, but I see it sort of. I'll stop. Uh, okay, here we go. Um, I bought this uh, Remington haircut kit for 24 bucks in Big W. There was a more expensive one, 39 bucks, 42 bucks, 55, 100, but I know you said not to buy cheap, but it would be bad in quality, but it's my first time. I'm not asking for much, so that's why I bought the cheap one, but Remington is a good price. All right, here we go. Ta-da! Now I have to unpack the thing when I was it, which is sort of ugly, but it's a corded. Uh, I still don't know what this called. Uh, sometimes they call it hair razor, which it isn't. Sometimes I call it the haircut electric thingy. <laughs> oh, look at that. That's not too bad, is it? Let's take the card off. I need to learn how to use this thing actually before I shave my hair, don't I? Look at that. So this is stainless steel, uh, which means it won't rust, uh, but, and it's also quite medium size, so it looks good. Uh, big fat haircut electric thingy. Love it. And what comes with the box, which I like, is a black plastic bag to put over yourself, uh, keep yourself clean, uh, which is very nice addition. Uh, but the best thing is these things. These are all the guards. And not only that, it comes with two combs and scissors and cleaning products so it's very well equipped uh, i will be able to make frequent haircuts not just to shave in august and i'm thinking you know i might try mullet i might try obviously faded undercut the problem with that is when i do an undercut i have to wait for them to grow out so i might even shave again uh, the possibility is endless and I'm very excited for it. And we'll talk later, okay? Bye. I cannot pinpoint to you the exact moment in which I wanted to shave my head, but I knew I was going to commit to it this year. There were many reasons to it. One, there was the fact that I've been donating my hair for the last four years. Every time I think about a kid with my locks as their wig, it does warm my heart. And since my father passing two years ago from cancer, I've always wanted to do something big in commemoration. But as much as it was for charity and I guess somewhat for my old man, this decision was also very much selfishly for me and for my therapy. I graduated high school last year. And for some people, that was their godsend blessings. For some, it was simply a nostalgic end for a chapter. For me, I was lost. I felt like a frail, domesticated circus bird who was told to spread its gorgeous wings beyond the four walls it has grown and outgrown in. For the most part of semester one in uni, I was spiralling from lack of structure and loneliness, while others were vibrating from the joy of freedom. I know of many who liked their school. I know of many more who hated it. But I don't think I have truly found someone who love it as dearly as me. I believe that what high school gave me was my life. I think it saved me. It gave me a sense of purpose I never thought I was capable of having. 
but I knew I couldn't let it be the only purpose I'll ever have in life. To work that hard and that long only to peak in high school? I couldn't do that to myself. And just like my favorite teacher taught me, the same way he has taught me so many other things in life, everybody moves on. Everybody has moved on. It was time that I did, and this was the way to do it. In a way, it was incredibly symbolic. I have cut my hair a thousand times by now since year seven, but I've never completely shaved it off. I've grown and changed as a person since year seven, but I've always been this kid from high school. If I had just cut my hair again, it would have ended up a footnote in that chapter, but not today. Today, I made it my mission to write a new chapter, to reset as a woman. Finally, this is a proper F you to society. Look, for as long as I could remember, I walk around like Narcissus wearing a lion mane. In every photo you see of me, my chin is so high up, you think I could touch the sky with the smugness smeared on my face. And yet, insecurity was my middle name. And every day I suffer as the consequence of it. Becoming college captain was all that I had ever wanted in high school. And because of a few behind-the-back talks from some inconsequential people, I spent most of it worrying and doubting my ability instead of enjoying the win that I had so much desired. There were times when doubts filled my head and I think about what other people's perception of me will be. My mother, bless her soul, I love her, but she was not helping the situation. She made me worried about what my colleagues would think and what my relatives would think and what strangers on the street would think. And I knew that's exactly why I had to do it. Because until I do, I will never truly escape the chain of societal expectations that I was taught to respect. I don't want to lie awake at night thinking about how to make somebody proud. I don't want to worry about not showing that I'm gay enough, smart enough, good enough. So, in the fourth grade, my mother cut a chunk of my hair off because my teacher hated the long, messy hair. Today, I cut my hair off despite people telling me they love the beautiful glossy black hair and instead of wondering if people are proud of me i am in fact proud of myself anyway uh you probably want to uh, see my face hey so let's do a post haircut reflection yeah <laughs> anyway uh, first of all, I would just like to say my parents' attractive jeans don't just run in their hair. Uh, this face is made for this look. I absolutely love it. And it feels so, so silly to be worried about not liking myself or other people not liking me. I feel so much lighter, like two kilograms lighter. If you were watching the video uh, as you are watching now, I was grinning the entire time. In fact, I just went from number four to a number three on my hair. Uh, it was magical to see my hair that short and then no hair at all. Crazy. And I went to school uh, today. My colleagues were supportive. My students didn't say a single bad thing because honestly, people in Australia don't really care. I didn't hide behind any beanies. I love, love running my hand through hair. It feels like a fidget toy and I will never be bored of it. I wish you could feel it in person. It is absolutely mesmerizing. Um, I also have really strong bone structures. Um, thanks, Dad. Very masculine square face. So few people have already called me a boy, which I don't mind. And second of all, hair tends to hide your facial structure. You can hide behind your hair, but without hair, it becomes so much clearer it becomes so much out there you know so people can now see what my face really look like oh. all right all right some people make a big deal of it um, before i cut my hair so it did make me nervous but now i am incredibly glad that my nerves didn't stop me i am genuinely excited about what the journey is going to bring me uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank some people. I want to thank people from Perth, mum's friends and our friends who took their time to wish me happy birthday and still remember this weird kid that walked past their lives a few moons ago. Um, 
I miss Perth and I miss these people and they show me today and every other day why I miss them. Wonderful, kind people and I really appreciate it. I also want to thank the people from Adelaide who have known me less than six months and yet managed to make me feel welcomed and loved in their own little ways. The small things you folks have done, no matter how small, is greatly appreciated by me. To thank individually, I want to thank my family in Adelaide, the H family. My brother remembered that I like mango and lemon cake, and then when we couldn't find one, he bought me a plant. I told him in passing that one of mine has died and I wanted a big one, and he bought a huge one to replace it. He annoys the shit out of me like a real brother, and he secretly cares like one too. My aunt bought me so many flowers. I mean, that's one. There's another one out there. She, they cook and bought me all of my favorite food for dinner. We have celebrated my birthday like three times now. They know how despondent I can get over growing old. And they have made this birthday so subtly warm and cozy that I never once thought about being unhappy. Most importantly, they have been nothing but supportive. If I was under another Vietnamese roof that was just slightly more critical or judgmental of my choice, I might have gone through with this with so much more anxiety and stress. Instead, they let me grow and learn and make decisions by myself because it's my life and they respect it. For that, I could not be more thankful. I would also like to thank my mother. She wasn't thrilled about the decision when I announced it and um, she did attempt to dissuade me but at the end of the day, she never pulled leverage to stop me. This is a woman who made true of the words she stated. See, I'm sure she's not the only mother that said as long as you're happy, I'm happy. But I know that not many women can live by those words. I am confident that she is one of the very few mother who do. She cried last time I cut my hair, so I couldn't imagine what she feels like seeing this new development. Look, it is not easy to see your kid grow up. Ask your mother. In fact, heck, seeing you grow up was hard for me. But this woman has sweat and bled for me. When I was younger, we were attached by the hips, like sisters. We were one because we were the only one. We were us against the world. And so I know it's extremely difficult for her to have me turn out to be this ultra independent kid, this rebelliously creative kid, this wild, uncontrolled kid. But she chose to learn and adapt every day. She learned to apologize and communicate and learned to let me do this. And never once made me doubt her everlasting overflowing love. I am not going to lie, her reaction to my hair is frankly similar to her reaction to my sexuality. Semi-supportive. I just want to say thank you mom for being semi-supportive. That is already better than many parents who are non-supportive. I do wish that you were fully supportive, but I know that you love me and you just need time. And just like how you gave me your time, I am happy to give you mine. Finally. I would like to thank you, Jazzy, because why not? I just like thanking you for existing, mate. We don't get to talk every day anymore. We don't get to lie on the grass and gossip about the teachers under the sun anymore. And yet our loyalty to each other never wavered once. And it never will. Uh, happy birthday to me, and I will see you on Friday, Jazzy.